Good morning, good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in this morning. Uh, thank you all for tuning in this morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in. I uh, hope you all have a wonderful day. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. Pop Curry, what's going on, man? I hope you feel better. I hope you feel better uh, as well. Uh, get you some rest. Don't let them, don't let them uh, cause you to to overstrain trying to trying to get them to pull you into into an area of uh, trying to prove you got game. <laughs> so I hope you're doing well, man. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well. I thought soaking your feet would be uh would be a good thing for you. Uh, but it seems as though you need some more, more intervention, uh, maybe some medicine or something like that. But uh, blessings to you as well, sir. Hey, what's going on, uh, uh, Rubel? What's going on, Cuz? How you doing? Thanks for tuning in, Minister Casey uh, Huey. What's going on, Boom Church? Uh, everybody, what's going on, FM Stokes? Boom Church, Sister Aisha. Boom Church, Jacksonville. Uh, the Boom Church, Jacksonville, and Atlanta uh, family is on here deep. Um, all praises to the Most High for y'all. Uh, we're definitely going to get into a a uh, conversation this morning, and um, it's going to be awesome. I'm um, going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to look at some things. Denise, Sister Denise Woodard Williams, what's going on? Shalom uh, to you as well. Uh, hey, everybody. Thank y'all for tuning in. I see everybody ready this morning. Brother Gidron, what's up? Uh, Brother Eric Riddick, what's up? What's going on, everybody? Thank y'all for tuning in. Um, give everybody an opportunity to jump in here. Kendra Wyatt, what's going on? What's going on? So Kendra, so it's Kendra, you got two more months. Two more months for you push out that that beautiful queen uh, uh, with a beautiful daughter. Good morning. Uh, congratulations to you and your husband as well. Curtis Anderson, what's going on, brother? Uh, thanks for tuning in. Sister Diana, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate all of y'all for tuning in every morning. I appreciate all of y'all for sharing the videos, tagging people. Uh, I appreciate all of y'all for all of your support and your time. It's truly a blessing uh, to have all of you on uh, to pretty much every morning uh, listening to me. You could have um, uh, be doing something else, but um, I thank you guys for uh, being faithful. I wish all of us could be uh, within an hour radius of each other. Uh, that way we can all have fellowship and service uh, together uh, amongst uh, brother and sisters, even though we do it online. But it's nothing like uh, fellowship and amongst your brothers and sisters. All right? There's nothing like fellowship and amongst brothers and sisters being able to see their smile and, and talk with them and, and, and encourage them and pray for them our brothers and sisters. So uh, on this morning, it's, it's just uh, going to be, uh, we're going to be digging into this thing. I'm, I started um, digging into, uh, we did with Romans chapter number five and Romans chapter six, seven, and eight uh, on the understanding of we're not under the law. And then um, I'm also going to start, well, we started with, uh, with our church, uh, Boom Church, dealing with um, Paul on trial, and we dealt with that uh, and showing how Paul went to all the different cities and things of that nature. We started with that, um, and we did just did Romans uh, here on Facebook Live, uh, but we're also going to um, um, start um, dealing with all of these letters of Paul and bring things full circle. Um, this Friday, this Saturday uh, at Boom Church Jacksonville, we will be digging into Galatians and bringing a clear understanding of what uh, Paul is referencing in Galatians, especially uh, when it comes down to dealing with circumcision and things of that nature. Um, but we're also going to, today, we're going to look at um, um, the brother Paul, and, and it's very important that um, it's so many different perspectives. Hey, what's going on, uh, uh, brother Hughes? Hey, what's going on? Um, it's also very important to understand that uh, we titled this video, this message, uh, you know, Free Apostle Paul. Um, Paul has been locked up uh, again by several people 
who were holding the blood brother Paul up uh, hostage uh, and making sure that he does what they want him to do. And we have uh, so many different uh, groups of people who use our blood brother um, to the point where I call him America's most wanted because majority of these issues uh, with Paul and his letters is stemmed in the coast of or on this side of the world uh, in America. It's not too many people are arguing and disputing um, regarding our beloved brother and some of his teachings, but it's predominantly uh, here uh, in the Americas. And so we'll begin to look at this um, this series or this teaching. Uh, I call them uh, Free Apostle Paul, America's Most Wanted, Most Misunderstood, and Most Misinterpreted. Um, because I believe that there's a lot of people who are very have a misunderstanding of uh, Brother Paul, but also um, a lot of brothers and sisters um, not only have a misunderstanding, but very misinterpreted um, when it comes down to some of the things that he says. And so these are letters and these letters should be read as such. Uh, we can, shouldn't formulate a doctrine out of uh, letters. He's trying to resolve problems and issues with things, even though we can see the influence um, of grace, the influence of Torah also in his letters. Um, but I think we should look at them um, from the perspective of those being letters and very informative that can help brothers and sisters even to the day in which we live. Now, when we begin to look at this, um, I always tell brothers and sisters to get a thorough understanding of the book of Acts. That way you can, it can, the book of Acts will help you along the way. I'm a firm believer that the book of Acts is the foundation to the Apostle Paul's letters. I believe that the book of Acts is the, um, that pretty much all of his letters uh, were written to those um, that can be found in the book of Acts, which will give you a thorough understanding of the issues that were going on uh, when they wrote him a letter and he responded to them, giving them guidance. And oftentimes uh, these different letters were dealing with different situations. Um, many of the letters that were that he responded to um, didn't deal with the same issue because each congregation had different issues that they were dealing with, different issues they were trying to overcome, uh, different issues of trying to get a thorough and complete understanding. And so therefore he would give wisdom um, Sometimes he would give his opinion about a certain issue in which many times we've taken that and deemed that doctrine. Um, and also, um, he would also give uh, um, his perspective from Torah. Okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a, a duality uh, of understanding in which he's giving to make sure that those who he's writing to can have a complete understanding and resolve those issues or get some form of wisdom and guidance. Now, this wisdom and guidance, even though he speaks of himself, he's not going to speak of himself all um, in the time that he does speak of himself. He does not go against, okay, the instructions uh, that's given. We're going to look at this here today. Now, start with, we're going to start here in the book of Acts, okay? We're going to deal with Acts, and we're going to start in 8, chapter number 18, we're going to look at Acts chapter number 18, and then we're going to uh, uh, end, we're going to look at, I'm sorry, we're going to go to Acts chapter 18, then we're going to go into one of his letters in Romans, and then we're going to go from that letter to Deuteronomy, okay, to get a thorough understanding of what's going on, okay? Now, let's look at this. We're going to go to Acts chapter number 18. All right. And before I start, let me see and make sure that I'm able to send out uh, some invitations here. You know, sometimes brothers and sisters don't get them. Sorry about that, y'all. If you see a, a, a invite, I'm just going down this list. Uh, I wish it was where you can send it to all, but unfortunately, uh, you can't do that. So you have to uh, go one by one. All right. Some of y'all may get it double, but 
I'm just sending out a couple here. All right, thank y'all for being patient as I sent out a couple of invitations. Uh, if you have not um, subscribed to be notified when I go live, you definitely want to do that. There should be a button on the screen right now to let you subscribe. But okay, let's jump into Acts chapter 18. All right, Acts chapter 18, we're going to start at verse number four. Acts 18 and verse number four. Acts 18 and 4, so we can get an understanding of what's going on before we get to um, one of his letters, okay? Acts chapter number 18 and verse number 4, as it reads, and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Stop right there. I want y'all to listen to this. This is very key here. This is very key. Okay. In Acts chapter 18 and 4, it said that Paul goes into the synagogues every Sabbath and reasoned in the synagogue with Jews and Greeks. Wait a minute. Hold on. How can there be Greeks in the, in the synagogue, which we know where only Jews dwell, that J Greeks cannot go in the synagogue unless they're only identified in Greek by Greeks by which the reason that they will, the, 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 uh, the area or the region in which they were raised, that doesn't mean that they're natural blood Greeks. I want y'all to catch this. Listen to this. It is forbidden for anyone that is not a blood Israelite to enter into the synagogue. I want y'all to read this. Okay. Look at this really quick, really good here. It says in Acts 18 and verse number four. I really want y'all to pay. We're going to walk this thing down slowly. So y'all can get an understanding here of what's being taken place. It says in Acts 18 and 4 that he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. Okay? He wasn't just going there just to simply debate or reason with somebody. Okay? That wasn't the whole point of him going there. It was also a part of his custom too. But he knew that he was trying to reach a certain demographic of people. Look at this. I want y'all to check this out. He went and reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. Because if you understand Paul's mission, Paul's mission was not simply to the Gentiles. If you understand the book of Acts, that's why I tell, that's why I'm teaching my congregation, we're starting in Acts. We're not dealing with Paul's letters until we get a thorough understanding of the book of Acts because Acts is going to help you out a whole lot in not misinterpreting Paul's letters. You must get a thorough understanding of the book of Acts because it's going to save you a lot of headaches, a lot of misunderstandings, and a lot of misinterpretations. Listen to what he says. Listen to what the scripture says. We walk in this slow. He reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews, okay, and the Greeks. There were Jews and Greeks in the synagogue, but not Gentile, natural blood Greeks. These were Greeks who were, who were Israelites, who were Hellenized, who were Israelites by blood, but were identified as Greeks based on the region in which they were born or this time or the area in which they were born. It's no different than someone being a African-American or being a uh, uh, from Haitian or 
uh, someone in England, they're identified as English or American, but that's not what's their that's not their blood nationality. That's not their blood nationality. It's just you're identified as an American. This is why people can be Asian, get citizenship in America, and go fight in the war for America and be identified based on the region as an American with American flag, the American uniform, but their culture, their blood, and their custom is of Chinese or the Chinese nationality. That's why people can do that. That's why those you have in the military, you have all types of nationalities of people, but they're under one banner of region or one, or one uh, nation. But they are part of another nation, blood-wise, but they fight for America and identify as American. This is what this is going on here. This is why there can be Greeks in the temple that he's reasoning with. They're not Gentiles by blood. Let's keep reading here. Verse number five. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Christ was, that Jesus was Christ. And I'm reading it as is. All right. Y'all don't know me by now. I ain't name banging. Okay. Those y'all just not joining, I'm reading it as is. I ain't changing for y'all. Okay. But look what it says. It says, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. Here is the whole point and purpose and the intent and understanding of the New Testament. Here's what the, the New Testament was not about if the law done away with. The New Testament and Paul preaching and teaching was solely about is Christ Hamashiach. Is Christ Hamashiach. This is what the whole New Testament is about. We've made the New Testament something that is not. That's why we get that's that's the reason why we're arguing over all this stuff. We've made Paul's letters out of being about going against the law when it was never about that. It's about the New Testament. It's about is Christ the Savior or should we wait for another? Or should we look for another? Or if he's not the one. The, the Pharisees, the Pharisees believe, Shalom, what's going on, Ugo? The Pharisees didn't believe that he was the one. The people of the way did. This is what the feuding and the butting of the heads was always about. The Pharisees and those who followed them, those of the circumcision, was trying to keep bring folks back under that Moses is your savior. You need to follow and do all the things that were, you know, that dude that y'all talking about that's Christ, he is not the savior. That's what the whole, that's what the New Testament is about. This is what it's about. Now let's keep reading. Look what it says in Acts 18 and verse number four, verse number five. And when Silas, and when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. That's what Paul wanted to do. That's what that's that's what his gospel was. All right, that or uh, the gospel assigned to him. He was not just to teach Gentiles or Hellenized Israelites, who we see these Hellenized Israelites who woke up to who they were in Acts chapter two, knew who they were and they were coming to Pentecost, but yet they were still identified by the nation in which they live or the area in which they live, but yet they were blood Israelites, but yet they were identified as Greeks by some of the other brothers, but yet they still had access in the synagogue because they could prove that they were Israelites. 
That's why you see Paul going into the reasoning with Jews and Greeks in the synagogue. In the synagogue. But look what it says right here in verse number six. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, your blood is upon your own head. They didn't receive and they rejected that Christ was the savior. They refused and they rejected that. Paul ain't going to talk to them about the Torah. They weren't bickering arguing about no Torah. They weren't dealing with that. That was something that was already established. Everybody, they, they, that, was, that wasn't even a, nothing that they was even arguing about. That was not even, of that day, that was not even the main issue of discussion. They weren't even dealing with that, whether the Torah was done away with or not, or whether the law done away with or not. They was dealing with, is this dude that y'all preaching this gospel, talking about you, got, you can't be saved, or you can't receive no salvation, or you can't do none of that, except you go through him and accept him and save you. That's what the bickering and the arguing was about between these people. Now, between us, we making it about the law. They weren't making it about, even the Pharisees weren't making it about the law. Even Paul and the apostles weren't making it about the law. They was making it about was he, is he the savior? And we see simply right here that they rejected that notion. But look what it says. It says in verse number six, and when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment. He shook his raiment. Okay. And said unto them, your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth. I will go unto the Gentiles. Wait a minute. Listen to this. I want y'all to check this out. Now, Paul, if the Greeks were the Gentiles, then why would Paul have to identify the others? That just, he would have just simply said, hey, listen, Paul went into the synagogue and he, and he reasoned and persuaded the Jews and the Gentiles. It would have said that if it was talking about natural blood Gentiles. But it said Greeks because it was talking about Hellenized Israelites who were Israelite by blood, but yet they had Greek nationality, all right, or Greek went under the Greek umbrella of the region. But yet in verse number six, he separated the Greeks from the Gentiles. He separated it. Listen to what he says. In verse number four, he went in reason with the Jews and the Greeks. And in verse number six, it says, I am clean. Your blood will be upon your head. From henceforth, I will go to the Gentiles. He didn't say I was going to know Greeks. Nor did he call the Greeks Gentiles. He said, I, will, I am going to the Gentiles. He's very specific because the people who are identified as Greeks in verse four, they know they Israelites. But everybody, the Jews and the Greeks know that the Gentiles he's talking about are people who are not natural blood Gent Israel, natural blood Israelites, but they're natural blood Gentiles. This is why the, the distinguishing of the difference is there. Let's keep reading. Look what it says here, verse number seven. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God whose house joined hard to the synagogue. So we know that his house was committed to going to the synagogue. Okay? Committed to going to the synagogue. All right? So all this stuff about people talking about Paul was teaching against the law, Paul double-minded. Y'all y'all need to stop. Y'all ain't read no book. Y'all have not read the book. Oh, well, Paul don't know what he when He can't make his mind up. He don't know. No, you can't make your mind up. Don't put it on Paul. Don't lock him up. Talking about, oh, Paul is confused. Or Paul don't know what he's talking about. Paul doesn't know. One minute he this over here. One minute he say he's with the law. The next minute he say he's not with the law. Oh, no, you are double-minded. Then you got other folk over here say, well, Paul was teaching all about grace. And Paul was teaching against the law. No, you teaching against the law. You want to up uphold grace as the official standard. This is what you doing. Don't put words in the beloved brother's mouth. The beloved, the beloved brother knew his assignment and he knew you can't run around here living wicked. He knew you couldn't run around here living wicked. I got the English understanding of this. Y'all got the Hebrew understanding and y'all still can't even understand. 
I'm reading the English. I ain't even reading the Greek. And y'all still can't get to understand it. So what, why, what, is the, what is the difference? What is so important? What's so important? You get to understand it? I mean, because this is plain and simple. In the English, I ain't even got to go into the Greek. I don't even have to go into the Hebrew. And yet, y'all in the Hebrew, and yet y'all in the Greek, y'all Greek scholars, y'all Hebrew scholars, and I'm reading English and I got to understand it. And yet, y'all got all this knowledge and ain't got no understanding. And you want to argue about who reading what. You want to argue about this? Oh, you need to get the, you need to get the Hebrew. Oh, you need to get it to the Greek. Y'all need to throw that King James away. Y'all need to throw them English translations away. Y'all need to throw this away. Y'all need to throw that away, brother. Listen, I don't care what you grab. I don't care how many languages you know. If you don't have the ruach, you have no understanding. Point blank. Period. Point blank. Period. Why? Because the spirit of the most high transcends languages. He the one created the languages. Y'all know about the Tower of Babel? He the one created the languages. You think he don't know? That's why I be telling y'all. Y'all tripping over all this other stuff and yet y'all still don't have no understanding, man. It makes no sense. Y'all want to lock the brother up. He's America's most wanted. Y'all done made him America's most wanted. All right, let's roll here. Let's read. All right, verse number seven. Look what it says. And he departed thence and entered the man, certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped Yah, or God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord. The man already believed in the Torah. This is why the scripture said makes it plain and say he believed on the Lord because he already believed on the Torah. That's why it's distinguishing and making it and, and, and standing it out to you. Specifically using the term dealing with the father or dealing with the dealing with the Messiah. This man house was attached, was 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 uh, was faithful to going to the synagogue. So the Torah wasn't even a conversation that Paul needed to talk to them about unless he was bringing Christ out of the Torah. That's the only time you've seen Paul deal with the Torah with these people. Because why? Because they understood the Torah thoroughly. So the only time he went into the Torah was to pull Christ out of the Torah, to give them an understanding of him being in the Torah. That's the only reason why Paul was teaching them and talking to them about the Torah. They understood it, but they didn't understand grace. They did not understand grace. So Paul was having to overemphasize grace to them simply because they had a thorough over understanding of Torah. But they had no understanding. They were elementary. They were babes when it came to understanding grace. That's the only reason why Paul was talking to them about grace and coming and dealing with the dealing from that perspective. He wasn't teaching against the Torah. We just read in Acts 18, verse number four. We're in verse number eight right now. Paul was still, they understood living right. They just didn't understand grace and they didn't understand who the Messiah was. That was, that's what the biggest question of the day. The biggest question of the day was, who is, is this the Messiah or not? That's what they debate was about. We debating about the law. We debating about all living righteous, living holy, holiness and sanctification, all that stuff. That stuff was elementary. Them folks had a thorough understanding. Of that. They didn't, they didn't understand who this Christ was. They wanted to make sure that they got an educated understanding. Is this the Messiah or not? And that's what the disciples was dealing with against the Pharisees. Let's keep reading. Verse number eight. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians, he go Corinthians, right? See, you see this? You see this? And many of the Corinthians. So we know that Paul, okay, is in Corinth. How do we know that? Because you go back up to Acts 18 and 1, which we did not read, 
But for the sole purpose of getting edification, we go to Acts 18 and 1. Look what it says. After these things, Paul departed Athens and came to Corinth. So he's in Corinth. Here's why you got a letter to the Corinthians. Because why? There was a congregation established in Corinth. That's why I told you, if you read the book of Acts and get a thorough understanding of the book of Acts, you will get an understanding of Paul's letters. If you have no understanding of Acts, you're going to be lost. If you have no understanding of Acts, you're going to misunderstand them. If you have no understanding of Acts, you're going to misinterpret them. And that's the problem that we got going on today. From the seminary school to Facebook. This is the problem that we got today. Look what it says here. It says, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. Yeah, they still was baptizing even after Christ ascended. Christ gone. He gone into the heavenlies. He gone back to the Father and they still baptizing. So I don't know where y'all get that from. You ain't, ain't got to baptize and all this other stuff. Okay, look at what it says. Many of the Corinthians believed. They already believed in the Torah. They already believed in the Torah. They believed in the Christ now. They believed in living holy. That was, that, was, that was never a question about living righteous. Now they have their faith not in the Torah, even though you still have to live, but they had their faith in Christ now. All while living right. They were living right with their faith in Christ. Something that they, they did not do before. They had their faith in blood animal sacrifice. But now they have their faith in the one who's the ultimate sacrifice. All still while living righteous. We're going to prove that too. Go to verse number 12. All right. Verse number 12. Acts chapter 18. And when Galileo was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made instructions with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. Why? Why are they bringing Paul to the judgment seat? Why are they making accusations against Paul? Here's why. Verse 23, saying this fellow persuade men to worship God contrary to the law. They're bringing indictment against Paul for teaching that Christ is the Messiah. That's what they brought indictments against Paul about. They ain't bring no indictment against Paul for teaching the law. They didn't bring no indictments against Paul for any other thing. Paul was going around teaching that Christ was the Messiah and that was contrary to, the, to what they interpreted the law to be because they had no revelation. They had no expectation only of themselves. That was it. And so now you see they're bringing up charges against Paul. Okay, bringing him to the judgment saying this fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. What are they talking about? They basically saying, listen, we don't, we don't worship no other man. We don't accept no other man as our savior, but the God of Moses. All right. Which they thoroughly do have that right. But they, they forgot one thing. They forgot to get an understanding of what the prophet said. They read it. They, had no, they didn't have no understanding of it. The same way we have today. You got brothers who are educated and can read, but they have no understanding. And they still missing Christ even today. They still misinterpreting Paul's letters. They still misinterpreting the four gospels. They still misinterpreting that Christ is the Messiah. That's why you got non-Messianics. That's why you got a whole bunch of other folks today. Okay, now let's prove this here. All right, let's deal with this here. We're going to jump over to... Um, let's prove that Paul was teaching not against the law, but was teaching to have faith in Christ all while living righteous, okay? Let's go to Acts 21. Acts chapter 21, and we're gonna start at verse number 17. Acts 21 and 17. And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly, this is Paul, okay? This is Paul and the brethren who's going to Jerusalem, which is the headquarters, to give an account 
or bear witness of what the father has been doing through him. Look at what it says. Verse number 18. And, all right, the day following Paul went in with us, James and all the elders were present. James, Paul, I mean, James, Peter, all the elders, all the brother, all the disciples are there. All, all, they're now apostles now, okay? And Paul goes in. But look what it says here, verse 19. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought amongst the Gentiles by his ministry. Not the Greeks, the Gentiles. Not He just left in Acts 18. He was in Corinth, okay? He just went into the synagogue and proclaimed that Christ was the Savior, okay, to the Greeks who were Hellenized Israelites, all right, who were inside the inner courts of the temple, and the Jews, those who knew they were, okay? But then he said, forget y'all. Y'all don't want to receive what Christ said, that he's the Savior? Then I'm going to the Gentiles, those who are not of the blood, natural blood. Okay, but those who are Gentiles by nature. All right, look what it says here. Verse number 19. Look what it says. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought amongst the Gentiles by his ministry, by the assignment that was given to him. That's what it's saying. Okay, verse number uh, 20. And when they heard it, this is when, listen, when the apostles heard this, when the brothers heard this, all right, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believed and they are all zealous of the law. So they say, hold on, listen. They say, Paul, listen, okay. We rejoice and we are glad that the father have used you to teach Gentiles to accept Christ and live holy. But we also are glorifying the Father for reaching those Israelites who follow the Torah, but yet they didn't follow the Christ. So we're going we're gonna to rejoice and be glad that the Father is bringing everybody and having everybody in holiness and righteousness but also have everybody to receive him, those who would receive, whether they be natural blood Gentiles or whether they be Greeks, Israelites who were Hellenized, as well as those who are natural blood Israelites. This is exactly what's going on here. Okay, let's look at this. Read it again. Look what it says. Verse 19. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things, what things, all right, uh, what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his assignment or his ministry that was given to him, okay? And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, thou seest, brother, how many thousands of of Jews there are which believe in Christ as the Savior, not sacrificing animals, not Moses as their Savior, okay? And they are all zealous. They're all uh, in pursuit of they all established or they love, okay, being obedient to the Torah, all while accepting Christ. Now, people tell you all the time, people say, well, oh, what Paul said, or, or you, know, you know, you can't have Christ and the law. You got to pick and choose which one. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Have we not read what the scriptures say? Have we not got an understanding of what these brothers are saying? They ain't talking about that these people still sacrificing animals. They're not talking about that. They're saying that these people are still living holy and accepting Torah as the truth, but yet at the same time, now they're accepting Christ as the Savior. Because that was the issue of the day, whether he is the Christ or not. It was never about the law. 
and people are confusing themselves. It's plain as day what it's saying. Now let's read it, verse 21. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake, listen that, not Greeks, not Jews amongst the Greeks. He said Jews amongst the Gentiles, okay? Listen, this is very specific. The same one we just read in Acts 18, okay? Let's look at this here. Acts 18 and verse number 12. Let's deal with this. Acts 18 and 12. We're going to go here again. And when Galileo was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying that this fellow persuade men to worship God contrary to the law. Okay. Now, when we jump over here, look what it says. <coughs> Basically what they, again, if you're just not joining, they're saying, when you read Acts 18, they're saying that Paul, okay, is teaching folks to follow and accept Christ as the savior. That's what they're talking about. They ain't talking about the law as you know it. All right. They're talking about they're bringing indictments against Paul for teaching that Christ is the Savior, okay? Now, when you jump over here to Acts 21, listen to what it says. The rumor started to spread because of Acts 18. That's when the rumor started to spread pretty much, okay? When you read Acts 21, they're talking about the rumors of Acts 18. Look at what Acts 21 and verse 21 says. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all Jews amongst the Gentiles to forsake Moses saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither walk after the customs. Paul wasn't teaching that. They brought that against Paul because Paul was teaching to accept Christ as the Savior. They made up these lies and said that Paul was, tell me, not teach, was teaching against circumcision. They made up these lies by saying that Paul was teaching against the customs. You ain't got to keep the Sabbath and all these other customs that the Jews was doing. Okay, that was assigned them based on the Torah. Now, let's go here. We're going to jump over here now to Romans. We're going to deal with the letter because this is, I'm telling you, this is the reason why Acts is important. Now, we're going to go to Romans and we're going to see, was Paul teaching the Gentiles to forsake the law? According to many who think that Acts 15 is Paul bringing an indictment against the Torah. Let's see if he's doing that. Let's jump over here to Acts. Let's go over to Romans chapter number 15. We're going to chop this mess up. Let's jump over here to Romans chapter number 15. All right. Romans chapter number 15. And, uh, and let's look at this. Romans 15. Now, we already established when it's saying Gentiles and when it's saying Greeks. Okay. To give you an understanding of who he's talking about. Now, let's jump over here to act the Romans 15. And let's deal with the Gentiles. Okay. Let's deal with these Gentiles. Okay, we ain't talking about no dog, no no uh, no Greeks. We ain't talking about no Hellenized folks. We talking about natural blood folks. Okay, um, Romans fifteen and verse number nine, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for them for His mercy. We just read that in Acts twenty one about the Gentiles glorifying the Father. Okay, accepting Christ as the Savior. Okay, now we're gonna see what Paul was teaching. All right, let's read it. Look what it says. All right, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, for this cause, I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. Verse number 10. And again, he saith, rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. Wait a minute, hold on. Rejoice? How the Gentiles going to rejoice with the Jews? Okay, unless they living like one. Uh-oh, we finna get into this. We finna get into this, y'all. We finna break this thing down. We gonna end and do the rhyme for y'all so y'all can get this understanding. All right, let's look at what it says. It says here, and, um, and again he saith, rejoice ye Gentiles, natural blood Gentiles, not Hellenized, with his people, natural blood Israelites. Okay, verse number 11, and again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. Verse number 12. And again, Isaiah saith, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, 
is him shall the Gentiles trust. It's talking about Christ. Let's read this again. Let's keep reading. Verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, having faith in Christ. Okay. And ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So the Gentiles receive the Holy Spirit too. You can't say that Christ is the son of the living God. There is no Gentile today can say that Christ is Lord except they have the Holy Spirit. Just like the Israelite. There is no Israelite that can say that Christ is Lord except he have the Holy Spirit. This is the same exact thing that Paul was teaching. Okay? So all those who declare that Christ is not the Lord, I don't care if you Gentile or Hebrew, you ain't got the Ruach HaKadosh. Point blank period. All right? All right? If you saying that he's not the Savior, you ain't got the Ruach. Point blank period. Let's keep reading here. All right? Look what it says. <clears throat> now the God of hope fill you. <clears throat> with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Gentiles, now that you believe, now that you believe, let's see if that all you need. Let's keep reading. Verse number 16, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up the, uh, of the Gentiles might be acceptable being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Let's keep reading. Is that all Gentiles have to do is believe? Let's see. Keep reading. Verse 17. I have therefore whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. What things pertain to God? What things pertain to him? Let's keep reading. Let's see if these Gentiles, all they got to do is just believe. Verse number 18. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ have not wrought me by me. I ain't speaking of my own self. I don't speak of myself. But guess what it said? To make the Gentiles obedient. Wait a minute. Hold on. O obedient by word, meaning obedient by declaring that he's the Savior and by deeds, having works, living righteous according to the commandments of the Most High. Where y'all get this metaphor? Let's read it. Come on. We're going to read this thing again. All right. Paul broke it down. All right. Paul said, first, you got faith. Now that you believe that Christ is the Savior, now you got to do something else. What else you got to do? Let's keep reading verse number 18. For I will not dare speak of any of those things which Christ have not wrought by me. I ain't speaking of myself. All right. Y'all can say what y'all want to say. All right, y'all can come up with all kind of lies saying that I preach against this and I taught against that. At the end of the day, the most high word is safe proof. And he ain't running around here co-signing no wickedness. And he ain't co-signing nobody living lawless and wicked. All right, let's keep reading. Look what it says. To make the Gentiles, to make the Gentiles, to make the Gentiles, all right, obedient to what? Can, some, can somebody please tell me obedient to what? What do the Gentiles got to be obedient to? Now we ain't talking about no trek. We not talking about no Hellenized. We ain't talking about no Hellenized Israelites. We talking natural blood Gentiles here. Okay, obedient to what? Can anybody tell me what be what is disobedience? Disobedience is going against the commandments of the Most High Yah. So if it's disobedience to go against the commandments, then it's obedience by following it. And I'm going to prove that too. I'm going to prove that. Y'all, y'all, I'm telling y'all, I'm listen, the most high coming for y'all with this foolishness. Y'all can keep on around here teaching this stuff all you want. Okay? The most high word is fail safe proof. You can say Paul is a hypocrite. You can say Paul is double-minded. You can say Paul. I'm talking about Hebrews and Christians. All right. The most high coming for y'all. If you're not dealing with dealing with these scriptures accordingly to what the most high saying. He got something in here for all of y'all because he's going to get all y'all the opportunity to escape damnation. So you can sit up here and throw Paul under the bus all you want to. Sit up here talking about Paul ain't this and Paul ain't that. Paul is double-minded. Leave Paul alone. Paul don't know what he's talking about. No, you don't know what you're talking about because you ain't got the Ruach. It's in the scriptures what the man just said. Okay? Point blank period. All right? And for y'all want to use Paul's letters as a means of going against the Torah, it ain't going to work. Because there's always something in this mug that's going to cut you left and right. That's why the scriptures say, study to show yourself approved. And I think, let me tell y'all something. 
I thank the Most High and I thank Christ for raising up Christian pastors who teach in righteousness and holiness. All right, because I know brothers out here who ain't teaching, you can do what you want to do. Okay, there are Christian pastors that do not teach, and I'm gonna keep on telling y'all this all day, every day, till y'all get it in y'all mind to stop saying that these all these Christian pastors teaching against the Torah. Stop it, because you ain't met every Christian pastor. I done met some of these Christian pastors, and they don't teach against the Torah. Okay, stop this mess. They just don't identify as Hebrew. Now, guess what? If you don't identify as Hebrew, so be it. I don't care. As long as you teaching the, these commandments that live righteous, it don't matter because it don't mean that you're going to hell because you don't identify as Hebrew. Okay, point blank period. And it don't mean you're getting in the kingdom because you do identify as Hebrew. It's all about teaching this truth and living and keeping these commandments. So if you want to call yourself Christian and you're teaching these commandments, go right ahead. I have no problem with it. I'm all about these scriptures and all about these commandments and all about Christ being the Savior. That is it, point blank period. Whatever name tag you want to wear, Go right ahead. All right, go right ahead. I have no problem with that. And the father ain't tripping about it either. Because when he bring all things good and bad into judgment, it, 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 he going to deal with all of y'all folks. Okay? All of y'all folks that's teaching wickedness. Now, let's keep reading it. Look, I'm going to read this again for y'all. We're going to read this thing again. I got to read this thing again. Let's go up here. We're going to start at verse number, verse number 13 of Romans 15. All right? Now, the God of hope... Fill you with all joy and peace in believing. In believing. Now that you believe, here's the next step, beloved. Now that you believe, here's the next step, beloved. The next step is right here in verse number 18. For I will not dare speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and and deed, faith and works, even for the Gentile. Let's prove all things. Jump over here to, to, to Deuteronomy. Jump over to Deuteronomy real quick. And we're not going to even deal with Deuteronomy 28. All right. That, listen, that, that, that's, that, to me, that's elementary now. We need, it's other things in Deuteronomy and, and, and other things in the Torah, all right, all right that we can deal with. All right, there's other things in that we can deal with. All right, stop making Deuteronomy 28. This is Deuteronomy 28 to me. This is me personally. This is for somebody that keeps doing dealing with Deuteronomy 28 as a means of proving something. To me, that right there specifically is for a babe. I'm passing me person. I'm passing Deuteronomy 28 to babes now. I'm not even. I'm there's stuff. There's scripts in the New Testament to prove things. Prove things outside of Deuteronomy 28. So now Deuteronomy 28. I'm taking that and I'm giving that to y'all babes and all y'all that want to argue with these folks and try to prove who y'all are by Deuteronomy 28. Go right ahead. I'm not dealing with that because there's a whole lot of other scriptures. When you study to show yourself approved, you don't have to even, you can use the whole entire scriptures to prove all things. All right. You use the Bible to prove all things, not one chapter. Okay. Let's deal with Deuteronomy chapter 29. Deuteronomy chapter number 29. Let's deal with that. All right. Let's see what Paul was talking about. All right, by making the Gentiles believe and be obedient. And be obedient to what? All right, we know it's talking about the commandments. Let's deal with this right here. Deuteronomy 29, all right? 29 and verse number one. These are the words of the covenant. These are the words of the covenant. Let's say that again. These are the words of the of the covenant. If you're just not joining, you definitely want to go back to like, watch this thing from the beginning because we tearing this thing up. The more, the, listen, the Holy Spirit is tearing this thing up. Okay? These are the words of the covenant which the Lord made, commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab beside the covenant which he made in Harel. Listen to this. Listen to this. Now. I want y'all to catch this. I want y'all to hear this real quick. I want y'all to hear this real good. So the Most High made a covenant at one point in time, okay, in Harel, okay? But while in that covenant, the Most High added to the covenant. He didn't, he didn't take away from the covenant. He added to it. He, as they grew, 
He said, let me give you a new commandment. See, this is why I tell y'all, when Christ said, I give you a new commandment, he ain't talking about he just get, getting rid of that commandment and give you something new that you ain't know. No, he's adding to something that he taught that he did not teach them before. This is the same thing. Now, who do you think talking to Deuteronomy? Who do you think talking to Deuteronomy? Ain't no man have seen or have talked to the Father. So who y'all think talking in Deuteronomy? Who y'all think showing up? Who y'all think talking to Moses? I, I'm going to say that for another lesson. I'm going to say that for another lesson. I'm going to say that for another lesson. You've been talking to the same dude the whole time. Okay? The same dude the whole time. I'm going to say that for a whole other lesson for y'all. For y'all who think that y'all done talked to the father before. Okay? No. Ain't no. The son on the one who done talked to the father. Okay? That's a whole other lesson. We'll deal with that another time. All right? Let's read it. Look what it says. It says, beside the covenant... Which he made. <laughs> Listen, but y'all, but y'all, but your folks messing y'all up, man. They, them folks, them folks got y'all folks going. Them folks got y'all folks going crazy, man. Y'all following and teaching all kind of stuff, and they give, and they giving, they giving you, okay, they giving you. <laughs> They giving you degrees based on foolishness that they teach. Now listen, let me keep some balance. In. I'm not against brothers who go to school. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. That's not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not banging on that. Okay, because I know I have a lot of brothers who who, who who go to school. You know and stuff like that. So I ain't banging on that. I'm not teaching against school, but I'm just saying. Okay, there's some of this foolishness. Some of this stuff that brothers are teaching are brothers who have degrees. Okay, and brothers who don't have degrees, but I'm just saying for the brothers who do, and, and who try to sit up there and throw their degree on you as though you're supposed to believe every word they say. No, absolutely not. We're not doing that. We follow what the Spirit's saying, whether you got a degree or not, because ain't nobody more educated than the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's read here. Let's keep reading. Look what it says in verse number one. Lord, the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab beside or addition to the covenant which he made with them in the in Horeb. And Moses called unto all Israel. See, 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 let me tell you something. This way y'all getting caught. This way y'all gonna get body slammed at. See, you see all Israel and you forgot that it was a mixed multitude that came out of Israel who was also identified as being Israel. Okay, this, see, I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Y'all better stop this with y'all personal agendas. Okay, look at what it says, okay? We're going to prove this thing, all right? This is the reason why Paul said he's going to make the, he, he's, he's teaching the Gentiles to have faith and live and keep the commandments, okay? This is the reason why, all right? This is the reason why Paul made that statement. This the Paul just wasn't making no statement of creating something or coming up with something. Okay, just come up with it. No, Paul says that I am sent to the Gentiles to have them believe in Christ, but also have them to live holy and righteous and keep the commandments too. Okay, he ain't talking. This this was nothing new. This was nothing new, and we read it here in Deuteronomy twenty nine. Okay, we read it in Deuteronomy twenty nine. Look what it says here. And Moses called unto all Israel. You think that it was just, he was just talking to Israel. No, 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 no. You fell in mistaken. He wasn't just talking to all, he, it was some Gentiles that was a, that left, that was a part of the mixed multitude. You think I'm like, let, we're going we're gonna to read it too. We're going to read it. I'm going to get it. Because see, y'all think I just make, I'm just making this stuff up. We're going to go to Exodus. This wasn't even a part of the scriptures I was going to read. But just for the sake of the doubter, you know, you always feel the, feel the spirit of a doubter. All right. We're going to go to Exodus chapter number, uh, we gonna, let's go to Exodus chapter number 12. All right, we're going to go to Exodus chapter number 12. We're going to bring this thing out, right? All right, we're going to bring it out. All right, Exodus chapter number 12 and verse number 38. And a mixed multitude went up with them and flocks and herds, very even very much cattle, okay? Verse number 43 of Exodus 12. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Why are you saying ain't no stranger eating thereof? We finna see why he said ain't no stranger eating thereof. Okay. All right. Verse number 45. All right. Verse number 44. But every man's servant that is bought, that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, 
Then shall he eat them. If you are a stranger and you weren't circumcised, you could not have partake of the Passover. Okay? You listen, these folks that are in that in the land of Egypt right now, they knew all the Israel knew they was Israel at that time. All right. They weren't, they weren't scattered. They weren't Hellenized yet. Okay? So you miss me with talking about these strangers in Exodus are, are Israelites who didn't know who they were. No, them folks knew who they were. Okay? They knew the difference between an Egyptian and an Israelite. They weren't confused. There was no Hellenization going on at that time. Okay? There was no Hellenization going on at that time. So please stop that lie. Okay? Let's read. Verse number, a stranger is a stranger in Exodus. Okay? He's a stranger. Okay? A non-Israelite. Verse number 45. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. So therefore, you can have those who are stranger, who's a natural, who's, who's not an Israelite, but then you also have those who are hired servants. Everybody that was a servant was, wasn't a servant because they were in trouble or because of something else. No, you had people who paid servants. The same way you can pay somebody to cut your grass, he's a paid servant, okay? The same way you pay somebody to be a nanny, that's a paid servant, okay? It's a paid servant. All right, now let's roll down here. Look what it says here. Verse number 47. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be shall be to him that is homeborn and to him that is a stranger that sojourneth among you. One law. Okay? This is why Paul said, I got to make sure that not only do you believe, but you better live right and keep these commandments. Even though you are a natural blood Gentile, but you decided to accept, okay, the Savior and his way. So therefore, if you are going to partake in anything we got going on, okay, if you're going to partake in anything we got going on, you got to live like us. You can't be blessed and have no blessings upon you. You can't be blessed, okay, unless you live like the, the, the same instructions he gave because there was only one law given. It was no law for the Hebrew and it was no law for the Gentile, okay? It wasn't no two separate laws. No, it was one even all the way back to the time when they came out of Egypt, okay? So we cannot sit here and say that the Lord is all about just making sure that the Hebrew live righteous and he's not making sure that the Gentile live righteous because at the end of the day, both going to come into judgment and both going to get dealt with whether it be good or bad. So these things is not just for one particular individual, but all of us. All of us have to accept Christ as Savior, and all of us have to make sure that we live righteous, striving towards perfection, the best of our ability. Okay? Now let's read. Look what it says. Verse number 49 of Deuteronomy 12. One shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Thus did all the children of Israel and the Lord command Moses and Aaron, so they did. And it came to pass the self same day that the Lord bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. So not only, okay, not only did he, did, were there Hebrews who left Egypt, but there were Egyptians and other nations of people. That's why it was called a mixed multitude. They left and went towards the promised land as well. Why would they have the opportunity to leave? Because they accepted the ways of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And once they accepted those ways, then all of them journeyed, okay? All of them journeyed, okay, towards the promised land. So therefore, let's jump back over here. The deal with what Paul was talking about in, in, in Romans 15, when he was talking to the Gentiles about uh, accepting Christ and believing, but also um, being obedient and having uh, uh, word and deeds. Okay, let's look what it says here. Let's read here in verse number 29 of Deuteronomy. Let's go back because I had to bring that up to show y'all so y'all understand. When it says in verse number two, Deuteronomy 29, it says that Moses called unto all Israel. He didn't just call unto just those who knew who they were as Israelites because now there's an instruction that is given. So guess what? The stranger there too. The Gentile there too. Those who came out of Egypt with them, 
they were there too. So when the father called, because he said, listen, there's one law given. And when you look at that person who is not a natural blood Israelite, if they are doing and living according to the instructions given, he's talking to all of us. He's talking to all of us. All of us who are obedient and have accepted his gracious and beloved son. And his command. He's talking to us all when he gives down a mandate. Now, if you want to live wickedly, then you ain't considered one of his. You're not considered one of his. It's point blank period. But look what it says here. Let's read it. And Moses called unto all Israel, Gentiles as well. Okay. And said unto them, ye have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt and unto Pharaoh. You Gentiles, y'all saw it too. Y'all Israelites, y'all saw it too. Okay, let's keep reading. And unto all his servants, and unto all his land, the great temptations which thine eyes have seen, the signs, those great miracles. That's what caused the stranger to say, forget it, I'm out of here. I'm following the God of Abraham. Whoever this God is that these Hebrews are worshiping, I'm following it. Forget, forget Ramses, forget Pharaoh, forget Thutmose, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, twentieth, and all of them. I'm out of here. Wherever y'all going, I'm going. So the father knew the intent of the heart of those who were strangers. So he said, listen, Moses, when you give this law, because these folks who don't know me definitely don't know me, who are not of my, who are not Israelite, these folks, they got, they, they used to worship other gods, Moses. They used to worship other gods, Moses. So therefore, when I give you this law, you need to make sure that everybody amongst the, that's in the vicinity, everybody that, 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 that even the stranger, they need to follow these commandments too. Because if you're not careful, these same folks, they got caught up in the signs and the wonders the same way all many of us do. Many of us, we get caught up in the miracles and the signs of wonders and all the great things that the Father doing to us and the blessings. And when we get comfortable, we forget about the Father. When we get comfortable, we stop praying. When we get comfortable, we stop fellowshipping. When we get comfortable, we stop reading our Bible. So Moses said, listen. Father said, listen. These folks, they were there. They saw the miracles. They saw what I did to Pharaoh. They saw all of this. But it's going to come a time, Moses, where they're going to forget about that because they're going to get comfortable. And when they get comfortable, I need you to remind all of these jokers and we not only did we see the strangers get comfortable, but even the children of Israel got comfortable. They caused Aaron to make a golden calf. They got comfortable and forgot who their deliverer was. So he said, listen, put Moses, call these jokers. Tell them, listen, the, the, the covenant I made with them in Horeb, I got to add, I got to teach them something. I got to add to what I've already established. Okay, let me give them something else as well. All right, but look what it says here. In verse, let's jump down here to verse number seven. And when he, when he came unto this place, Shion, the king of Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, okay, came out against us unto battle, and we smart them. Why? Because they had the favor of the Most High with them. That's why. It wasn't because of them, but they had the favor of the Most High with them. Why? Because of their obedience. That's why they had favor, because of their obedience. Now, ver jump down to verse number nine. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that ye may prosper in all that you do. This is what Paul was teaching and telling. Okay, y'all Hebrews, y'all got the law, but now y'all need to accept the Christ. Okay, y'all Gentiles. Okay, y'all at one point in time, all right, y'all just done straight away. Okay, y'all at one point in time, the father gave y'all forefathers the law too. All right, with the children of Israel who came out of Egypt, but y'all came in mixed multitude. Y'all don't forget about the law, and y'all definitely don't know nothing about no Christ. So therefore, I got to teach y'all to believe first, because these brothers and sisters already believe the Torah, but I got to teach them that they need to believe in Christ. But then also I need to teach y'all Gentiles, y'all need not only believe in Christ, but y'all also need to come back to the commandments too. All right. So therefore, Paul had a heavy assignment of dealing with two different groups of people who was crazy. OK, he had to deal with two crazy people that didn't want to listen to nobody. One love wickedness and the other one love being on top and love looking like they somebody dressed down. 
all right, dressing in their garments and all this other stuff. The Gentile loved just living how they wanted to live and partying and having orgies and eating all kind of stuff they wanted to eat. While the other one, they were so they were so all into the, into themselves and being arrogant and loving and want people to recognize them because of the clothes that they wear and the garments and the breastplates and all this other stuff. So Paul was dealing with two crazy nut baskets that he had to deal with in that day. I'm surprised. I see why the brother was stressed out. All right, I get stressed out. Sometimes. Sometimes too, okay, dealing with some of these crazy folks, all right, and stuff that they teaching. All right, let's live, let's keep reading here. Look what it says. In verse number uh 10. Ye stand this day, all of you before the Lord, your God. Wait a minute. Who? 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 We're gonna see, we're gonna see who all standing there. Okay. Ye stand, ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God your captains and your tribes, your elders and your officers with all the men of Israel. Ye little ones, your wives and thy stranger. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought it was just Moses. I thought it was just the children of Israel he was talking to. I thought it was just the children of Israel that Moses was talking to. No. The scripture says that he called all of Israel. Y'all forgot that there was one law given to, the, given to the stranger and the Israelite. And that stranger, if he keep the commandments, he shall be counted as one that is Israel. Okay? One that is Israel. Now, in today's time, fast forward, people have taken this and created the spiritual Israel stuff. And they've done away with the natural blood Israelite. And now spiritual Israel. No, it was never that way from the beginning. It was always about the bloodline. And then that then, then, then those who were strangers who came into the fold and attached themselves or followed the commandments of what the father came, uh, gave, then they became considered as one with the nation. It was no that they took over the nation and the nation no longer exists. The replacement theology stuff that was never in scripture. It was never in scripture. Okay, we see that going all the way back to here. Okay, now look at what it says here. Let's read this again. All right, now he called all of Israel, but let's look at what it says. Your little ones. Now he's going to break down who was there after the father called him because he knew one day that y'all would get a hold of these scriptures and y'all going to mess it up. You're going to misinterpret his words. You're going to come up with all these crazy doctrines. So the father said, in all my wisdom and all my knowledge and knowing the end from the beginning, I know that they're going to sit up there and say that it was only Israel there during the time that the law was given to Moses. No, it was not. And he's telling you right here. Okay, look at what he says. He said he called all of Israel. All right. But then he breaks down who all was, who he was talking about. Okay, let's look at what he says. Your little ones, your wives. And thy stranger that is in thy camp, from the hero of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water. Verse 12, that thou shouldest enter into covenant with the Lord. Who, in, who entered into the covenant with the Lord? Oh, it was just Israel entered into the covenant, huh? That's what y'all really thought. Y'all really thought that it was just Israel that entered into the covenant. No, brothers and sisters, there were also Gentiles, okay, who were obedient who agreed to. They agreed to. They agreed to it too. They agreed to it too. This is why Paul went and told him in Romans 15 that y'all need to be obedient. Y'all need to be obedient. Now that you believe, you need to be obedient. You need to return back to living righteous, living holy, keeping his commandments. And we're seeing it right here. It says right here. Listen to what it says in verse number 12. All right. Deuteronomy 29 and 12. That thou shouldest enter into covenant with the Lord thy God and enter his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day. All of y'all that's standing here. All of y'all that's standing here. All of y'all that's standing here in front of Moses is who I'm talking to. This is exactly what the father is saying. Verse 13, that he may establish thee to, to today 
for a people unto himself and that he may be unto thee a God as he hath said unto thee and as he hath sworn unto thy fathers to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Neither, listen to this, verse, I want y'all to highlight verse 14 and 15. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here, strangers and Hebrews, okay? He standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God and also with him that is not here with us this day. This is why these curses are perpetual. So when somebody tell you that the curses were fulfilled in Assyria, they lying. It's, some of them was, I did this live, this video for y'all about Deuteronomy 28. It's not the slave trade, okay? It's not just the slave trade. It's all the captivity that Israel went through. All of them. This covenant that was made was not just made with those who stood there at the time of Moses, but with their children too. With their children as well. So this is why he's saying, this covenant ain't just for y'all who's standing here. But this covenant for those who are not standing here too, meaning those who are not in the flesh. I'm speaking into y'all. I'm speaking into y'all testicles. I'm, this covenant is with y'all sperm. That's that, that, I, that. I know that's kind of graphic for some of y'all, but you should be adults. It, it's nothing graphic at all because y'all it's all kind of stuff on Facebook and social media. He said, I'm making this covenant with your seed. Your seed will agree to this covenant because you did. So I'm going to hold them accountable too. So it just didn't happen in Assyria. It happened in the Medes and Persians. It happened in the Babylonian captivity. It happened in the Assyrian captivity. It happened in the Greek captivity. Not only did it happen in the Greek captivity, but it happened in the Roman captivity. It happened in the Americas. It happened in Brazil. It happened in Barbados. It happened throughout the four corners of the earth. It happened in the four corners of the earth. And make sure we understand this. Absolutely, big Aku go. He made a covenant with Israel. But the Gentiles agreed to it too and to keep it. And they did. Some did. So when Israel fell off and started going into to, in the pagan worship, they did too. Those who were there in the agreement, they started going off into pagan worship too. That they were following Israel lead. The same way y'all do today. The same way you're doing today. Let's keep reading it. We all let's let's keep reading it so we can finish up. All right. Verse number 18. Lest there should be among you man and woman, or family, or tribe, whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve other gods of these nations. Lest there should be among you a root that beareth a gall of wood or wormwood. And it came to pass when he, when he heareth the words of this curse that he blessed himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the indignation of my heart. This is what people say today. People willfully violate the commandments of the Father and say, I'm covered in the grace. I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. You're blessed and highly favored and you're doing nothing. How? You willfully going against what the Father said do and living righteous and you say you blessed. I'm blessed. You're not going to bring me back under that bondage. 
but you cry to the father because your husband cheated on you and then you want to say he committed adultery and go to the courts and you want justice for adultery. But yet it's still, you, you, don't want, you don't believe in the commandments. Neither does your husband. This is why the commandments are important. This is why it's important for us to put it on our hearts. It's because the spirit of his word is what brings us conviction. That's the Holy Spirit which brings us conviction. That's why I call Holy Spirit. Not lawless spirit. Not wicked spirit. It's called Holy Spirit. Everybody said they got the Holy Spirit, but yet they live in like a wicked spirit. You can't have no Holy Spirit if you're not living right or even trying to. How can you have it? It don't work that way. Now, does that mean you're perfect? No, but there's a level of conviction that calls you to get back on the track of obedience. When you don't willfully sin, it causes you to get back on the track of obedience. Don't make no sense. Let's keep reading here. It says, he blessed himself in his heart. When you when, when a person tell you that they ain't got to keep no commandments and they tell you they blessed, you that person blessing their own self in their own heart. The father don't co-sign that. There's a requirement of how we should live. And how we should live shouldn't be based upon man's laws. We'll follow all, we'll follow six hundred, we'll follow sixty thousand man laws. And yet, when God say, "Hey, keep these commandments," you don't want to do it. You find a way to go against it. You find a way to say this. I say, I say, you, you, I'm under grace. Okay, yeah, we all under grace, but grace doesn't mean that these commandments done away with. Grace covers your behind when you don't willfully transgress the commandments. That's what grace is for. Because all of us have all of us fall short to it. This is the reason why we have grace. If it listen, if we didn't need if it, it would not be no grace if it wasn't for Christ. Now let me let me let me bring this to, to, to the forefront here. Okay, because I know some people are gonna talk about Abraham. Yes, I understand that. Yes, Noah found grace. But what I'm talking about here is there was no grace for committing abominations. Let's be clear. Your behind was put to death. Now that grace is in place. When you see, when you willfully sin, there's no grace under before Christ, before he comes in the flesh. How do we know that? Because the father told then Joshua then when they went to Jericho don't take nothing from Jericho now what Achan do Achan willfully transgressed the commandment where was his grace so you got to know what grace is see Noah didn't willfully that's why he found grace in the sight of the father this is why Abraham found grace in the sight of the father because he was obedient he didn't willfully transgress but Achan willfully transgressed after he told him, don't take nothing from Jericho. And Achan took it, going to hide it under. He got, not only did Achan get himself killed, but he got his family killed. He got everything that was attached to him put to death because the covenant was also made with his children. The covenant was also made with his wife. The covenant was also made with his cattle and his chickens and everything else. And Achan willfully transgressed the Torah or the commandment that was given to him. And guess what happened? The father killed this behind and killed everybody attached to him to show him he not playing. Show him he not playing. And this is what we do today. We clearly go against it. 
It don't matter if you Gentile. Or you, you can tell you say you're a Gentile all you want to. You still got an obligation. Still got an obligation. Let's move. Let's roll here. Look what it says. Let's get down here. All right. Verse number 20. The, uh, let's see. Let me see what time it is. Okay. Verse number 20. The Lord would not spare him. But then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man. And all the curses that are written in the book shall lie upon him. And the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. This is the same thing with Ananias and Sapphira. They transgressed the law under grace in the New Testament. They lied to Peter or to the Holy Spirit. What was their grace? They willfully transgress. See, there is a law in the book of Numbers that talks about ignorance. See, when you don't willfully do something, then the Lord finds grace upon you. He shines his grace upon you. But when you willfully do it, that's when he said, oh, <laughs> he turned into pinky on you. <laughs> oh, oh, this, this, this little, this little Hebrew going to try to rob me. <laughs> oh, this, this little Gentile going to try to rob me. He turned into pinky on you because now you're trying to rob him. You're trying to get something for nothing. You want you want every, you want the blessings, but you don't want to seek the kingdom and his righteousness. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that, but you want the blessings. <laughs> you trying to oh you think he gonna rob me? Then you start trying to explain, and that's when he busts. I say it again. I don't want to hear your excuses. You know better. They ain't get no grace under in the New Testament. He died on sight, dropped dead, point blank period, dropped dead. Let's finish up. Verse 21, highlight verse number 21 as well, or put a star by it. And the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses and the covenant that was written in this book of the law. Verse 22. So that the generations. To come. Of your children. I told you. This thing is about. This thing didn't end in one, space, in one particular area. Okay. Let's keep reading. So that the generations. To come of your children. That shall rise up. After you. And the stranger. That shall come from a far land shall say, when they see the plagues of that land and the sickness which the Lord had laid upon it. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to end right there. I could pull some more scriptures. You know, no, nah, no, nah, you know what? I ain't finished yet. Jump down here to verse number 27. Verse down, jump down to verse 27. We go 27 through 29 and we're going to be done. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land to bring upon it all curses that were written in the book, in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. So guess what? These are perpetual covenant, perpetual curses. All right, this covenant is made with, the, with them and their children. And so therefore, therefore, that's why you kept seeing Israel kept going into captivity, kept going into slavery, kept going into bondage, whether it was on land or sea, it did not matter. All right, the curses were already written out of what they were going to go through and them being scattered, and the things that will come upon them, okay? So therefore, this, that's, that's the issue. Now let's keep reading it. Where we at? Verse number 20, verse number 29. 
The secret thing belong unto the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, forever, that we may do all the words of this law. All of us. So if you're a Gentile, you want to get in the kingdom, you better accept it. That's what, that's, that's what Paul was teaching in, in Romans 15. Accept Christ and be obedient in words and deed. You just can't have words. But you better walk this thing out and live in it. I thank all of y'all for joining. We're going to keep dealing. We're going to keep dealing with these series on Paul letters. We got to break it down. We got to free our brother Paul, man. They got him locked up. They got, he got, he got a triple, he got a, a triple indictment on him, man. He got a triple indictment on him, man. They, man, they, they, man, they messing our, they messing our brother up, man. They messing our brother up, man. Man, they messing our brother up, man. We, we, we got a free Paul, man. They got Paul locked up, man. All kind of jails around here. All right. He's America's most wanted. He wanted by Hebrews and Christians. All right. I mean, God, dog, oh, man, this thing is simple, man. When you read it, the brother, the brother was clear. All right. Just have to get into it and pray that the Ruach give you an understanding. Love all y'all with the love of Christ. I pray that you cannot eat without eating from the word of Yah. For man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yah. I pray that you cannot drink without drinking from the living waters that flows from Christ. Let the light that is within you shine bright outside of you. And remember to love one another so that the world may know that we serve the true and living Yah. Until next time, brothers and sisters, man, it's awesome, man. All praise to the most high. This was an awesome, phenomenal lesson. And uh, I thank all of you for joining Jacksonville, Florida. We were down and we have service this week. We're going to be dealing with the book of Galatians. We're going to bring this Galatians. We're going to break this Galatians thing down. We're going to bring the truth out of our brother's letters. We go, listen, man, we, we are definitely coming with the key. We unlocking and letting our brother up out of the jail, man. Y'all got our brother locked up. All right. Shalom for everybody that's coming. All right. So shalom. Shalom to everybody just not coming. Coming on. You want to go back to the beginning and watch this awesome lesson. All right. Want to watch this awesome lesson. That's right. That's right. That's right, brother. That's right, brother. Uh, is it, uh, Ihondo. All right. Our praises, man. What's going on? Yes, man. That's right. That is that, uh, that Ghana, that's the Ivory Coast flag, man. Big shout out to you as well. Big, big shout out to you as well. All right. Big shout out to all, the, all my Ghanaian people as well. Ebos and the Yorubas. All right. Big shout out to all of y'all, man. All praise to the most high. I'll see y'all later. I'll see y'all in Jacksonville this week. The rain going to hold us up. The rain not going to hold us up from service. But we had some baptisms um, going on. So, therefore, we got to figure out a way. These back, we might have to hit the community pool. All right, we might have to hit the community pool. What's going on, Elder Robin Robin Milligan? I cannot wait to deal with this Galatians and this stuff about it. Man, we're gonna tear this Galatians up through the spirit. We're gonna tear this Galatians up. All right, all praise to the most high. I, I see y'all, man. See y'all this weekend. This I'll be in Jacksonville Friday, so love all of y'all. Hey, uh, brother Fenton, we might have to do some hip hop, man. I don't know if you. If you ever, we might have to hit hip hop up. I'm thinking about going Friday. All right. Love all y'all with the love of Christ, man. Blessings to you all. Shalom.